Welcome to the Station Wagon. I'm the older brother, Mark. And I'm little sister, Julie. This is the podcast where my brother and I give up something we take for granted and tell you how it goes. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Are you ready to do a podcast about letter writing and correspondence? I am so ready for this, Julie. Awesome. Old school. Okay. So, hey, everybody. We're going to get started. This is the podcast where we're going to talk about the history and cultural context of letter writing this time. And then Mark and I are going to kind of give up a little bit some of our normal communication style, and we are going to work on letter writing. Yeah, this is not my favorite episode. I'm just going to put it out there right now. You haven't tried it yet. Try writing some letters, and uh, then we'll come back and talk about it in two weeks. Which I is know. The second I know. I'll half try to hold stuff. on. Yep. Okay. 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 It's gonna be awesome. All right. Okay. So, hey, you Mark, know, I think you, you say that pretty much every time, though. There's some that you wanted to do that I thought were really stupid. I doubt it. <laughs> so, Mark, you gonna give me a quiz to get things rolling? Yes. Hold on one yes. second. Everybody. I'm going to get three for three this time for my first time ever. There are actually five questions in this quiz. I'm going to get three for five. (laughs) (laughs) What? Okay, so this is all about letter writing, right? So what is the part of the letter that includes the address and date at the top? Is it called the greeting, the heading, the body, or the closing? Oh, uh, wait, heading. Yeah, good job. So the blank is the heart of the letter where the message is written. Body. Right. Great, Julie. You might just get all these right. I might. Good. Uh, Where should you write the date and time on your letter? Under your address, above your address, under the recipient's address, or above the recipient's address? Wait, I'm I'm picturing it in my brain. Okay, the very first thing is my own address. Yeah, under your your address. Under my address. uh, It would go under the recipient's address. Oh. And then so for wrong. extra points, where does the recipient's address go? D- the very top left. Top left. Very good. For a formal letter, yeah. And for an informal letter, it would go on the right. But these days, we can break all those rules. Well, yeah, you could totally break those rules. But for formal letters, it goes on the left. And for informal letters, it goes on the right. But for these days, even in, I bet even the President of the United States is allowed to break that rule. Yeah, that's really okay, just let's uh, such a low there. bar. <laughs> um, when and where was the first stamp created? Wait, was that whole series four questions or was that one question? That was three questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing okay, great. so number four, when and okay. where was the first stamp created? 500 BCE, 1475, or 1840? The earliest one you said, 500 BCE. 500 BCE? No, it was 1840 England. What? That recent? Yeah, that recent. So up until that time, uh, the people would pay for postage. If there was payment for postage, it would be paid when the letter was received. And oh. then you were then you would pay based on how many papers it was. Um, in 1840 in England, they started up the first nationwide postal service. And so they made stamps and you bought a stamp and put it on the envelope and it's just like it is today it could go anywhere in the nation but, um, okay so answer me this in regency I'll try era, to answer you this <laughs> in regency era british novels and they they always talk about franking a letter and it's like only members of parliament are able to frank a letter and everyone else has to pay for it i have no that- idea Okay. I mean, I hear words that you're saying, but I don't know what, I don't know what regency means. I don't know what franking a letter means either. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Mark. I'll I'll use smaller words. Next Thank time. you very right. much. Appreciate it. Do you re- do you know the name of that first stamp? Like what it was the called? The Frank. Oh God. Are you sure? Well, I'm just Is guessing that your final? because. It, yeah. Well, yeah, because based on my region. Oh, here, let me give novels. you some. Let me give you some options. I forgot I have oh, options yeah, okay, for you. Oh, yeah, options. options. Uh, was it called the Penny Dreadful, the Penny Black, no. or the Victoria no. Trifle? Well, it's definitely not Penny Dreadful because that means like trash fiction. What were the other Very two? Good. Penny Black and Victoria Trifle. 
how do you spell trifle? Oh, you know, the usual way. <laughs> I can't tell if you're saying trifold, like oh, a no. brochure. Uh, no, no, not fold with a D on the end. No D on the end. Okay, Victoria Trifle. No, Penny Black. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and how much did it cost? A penny. Very good. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I win, right? It, so you, we have one more left. Um, oh. oh. Yeah. So letters Your were allowed. Your counting to... is so off, but that's I okay. know it's really weird, right? Um, <laughs> so letters were allowed to be up to a half ounce or fourteen grams, and they could be delivered at a flat rate of one penny, regardless of distance. Okay, Julie. Okay. So this is the last question. Um, you've not okay. been doing very well on the later questions, so get your thinking hat that's... on. Because your counting has been off. I keep thinking I've already reached like the fifth question, and then you keep asking me more. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. Just blame me. Okay, it's your fault. Okay, okay very good. I'm ready. Um, so when did the Pony Express start? In the United States, I know that much. Yeah, that's I've true. I've been to the Postal Museum. Well, in they DC. don't it's have really ponies good. anywhere else. Oh, right, I forgot about right. that. Right, okay. they're indigenous I, to the United States. Yeah, we invented them here. That's right. Yay, America. Okay, um, Pony Express, eighteen fifty six to nineteen twelve. That's really close. It started in eighteen sixty. So you got oh. the almost got the start date by four yeah. years. How long did it run? I would say until trains were invented. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure trains were invented prior before to 1860. Ponies. No, before not necessarily ponies before ponies. No, no. Well, actually the ponies that have like the unicorn <laughs> horn that comes out, yeah. those were invented later. But these ponies were around before trains. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and trains did not kill the Pony Express. Anyway, that they, they lasted for one year from oh, 1860 to 1861, it? and the telegraph killed it. Oh wow! Okay, that makes sense. And so what do you think it cost to send uh, a letter? A penny. It, why would you say a penny? Because that was the going rate in England. Yeah. And so they probably wanted to make it similar. I don't know. Right, but they didn't. Yeah, I guess I didn't tell you that the England um, experience was run by fast ponies. Anyway, this was um, <laughs> no. There they have horses. Oh, that's it's even true. fast. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Um, and here we're overrun by those indigenous ponies. We are lousy with them. <laughs> um, we have yeah. So it cost five dollars to send something over the Pony wow. Express. That's a hundred nowadays. Money no, five dollars back money? then. That's a hundred and forty dollars nowadays money. Oh. So okay, it was really, I, I get that, though. Yeah, that so, makes sense. So it was really governments that were using ponies the Pony are Express. Because really, ponies are really expensive. You're not buying the whole pony. Yeah. <laughs> You're not. I mean, what are you talking about? Yeah, but if it only ran for a year, I mean. And they're not that, trying to compress the cost of this into one year. They had no idea how long it was going to run. Yeah. Whenever you start a new industry, okay, think about microwaves and DVD machines. Like right. when those first came out, it cost a lot of money at first until, you know, it was successful and then it reduced in cost. Do, Same right. Well, because with those ponies. products, because they started producing more of those, there was more supply to meet demand. So are you saying yeah. that? They uh, mated the pony. They took the wild indigenous ponies. <laughs> the plan was to make. I don't know. I'm just saying it was probably for like really, really rich people yeah, in totally. like a super big rush. Totally right. It was for, in general, the American government and um, the, the English government were using the Pony Express to keep track of um, the goings ons outside of U.S. territories. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I get it that the government shells Gov, out a lot of money. Yep. Totally stuff. right. Although. Uh, that is not as a representative of the United States Department of Defense. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you clarified that. Thank you. Okie doke. So, so, Julie, hey, that, did is, I win the that quiz? is the uh, You did pretty well. I mean, you got some of the first ones right. I forget yes. the numbering system that we were using on those. <laughs> um, but yeah, you did really well. And that Excellent. is the quiz. Thanks, Julie. Woo okay. So. Mark Schechter, sometimes you give us history and yes. sometimes you don't. Yes. And I'm just wondering, what are, what are you doing today? Well, I'm not giving you any history except for what we just went over <laughs> in the quiz. Okay. Okay. Well, you did give us a fair amount in the quiz. So I guess that counts. Um, counts for something. It counts for something. Not much, but something. <sighs> and that's all right. Maybe our listeners can fill in what historical facts they know about the mail system. And by the way, that museum in D.C. is really good. Is it? Cool. But it's been like 10 years since I've been there. Okay, so do you want some science about 
letter writing? Yes, please. Good, because I have a lot, because I don't know if you know this, but I've actually published on this topic before. I did not know that. Well, now you do. Okay, so first of all, I really wanted to do this topic because I used to write letters all the time. Really? Um, I, yeah, because when I was in my you know, temple youth group as a high schooler, a lot of my friends lived afar, like You know, my friend Barbara lived in Nashville. My friend Lisa lived in Ohio. And then I'd meet friends at camp, and we wouldn't live in the same town. And back then, long distance was really expensive. So I'd write letters all the time. Um, And, of course, I had some long-distance relationships here and there. And when I was living abroad. Did you have a boyfriend in Canada? (laughs) I did have a – no, I didn't. Um, But I used to write to Grandpa Harry a lot. Um, I'd probably write to him at least once a month. Um, wow, that's as amazing. As a teenager and, and in college, too. And uh, you might not remember this, but you wrote me a couple letters from college, and those are extremely meaningful. And I have been digging through my garage for like a week trying to find this one particular letter from you that I know I have saved, and I just can't find it anywhere. Uh, Do you have any recollection of sending mail from college? No. Okay, well, for our listeners, so both my brothers are a lot older than me, and so all of a sudden, you know, when I'm like... It, 11 years old both my brothers are gone and all of a sudden I'm an only child and it was quite a shock um and so Mark once wrote me just this really amazing letter while he was a freshman in college just basically you know saying that he still loves me of course and that he knows how it's hard sometimes to be the only kid around with mom and dad and that I'll get through it so nice I know and I don't remember everything you said but it was just super sweet and nice and I reread that probably a thousand times I kept it like in my favorite file folder with all my other letters from my friends the garage where it's lost well (laughs) that was back when I was a kid (laughs) but nowadays I know I've got it somewhere I've got to find it anyway um now I write it was sweet so nowadays I still write letters I still keep stationary all the time at work in fact everyone knows they can come to me if they need a birthday card or something like that but um I write to Jason I mean Olaf once in a while at work and I'll just randomly send him letters but other than that I don't really write mail a lot and it's it almost feels creepy like unless it's a Christmas card or a thank you note like it just feels a little strange to just send your friends and loved ones well maybe loved ones is okay but just your friends random mail um unless there's like a real specific reason for it so So you wanted to do this because you wanted to creep out your friends is that what you're saying i wanted a good legit excuse to send people mail be like oh i just do this for my podcast but hey how's it going um but also i selfishly wanted to do this episode because i bought us a p.o box and i wanted to use it oh very good yeah. So um, for Meddling Kids, my Scooby-Doo review podcast, uh, people have started sending us gifts. And so I needed a P.O. box for that. And I was like, ooh, how can I leverage this? OK. Anyway, here's what we know about letter writing and communication. First of all, any kind of communication with others reduces isolation, right? The more social networks you have, there's tons of evidence indicating you're more supported, less depression, sometimes less anxiety, but just overall better happiness and life satisfaction. And letter writing is one of the ways to achieve that. And there are a slew of studies out there showing how letter writing as part of therapy is beneficial, as part of just general practice is beneficial. It, it's just a standard thing. It, there's ton, it, This is one of those knowns. It's in really, really well evidenced. But specifically, physical letters give us a tangible transitional object, for example, like that letter that you sent me from college was a tangible transitional object. I didn't have my brother around anymore to poke and give me wet willies, but I had that piece of paper. And so do you mean when you say transitional object, do you mean like a proxy of me? Yeah, like, um, you know, for babies, we talk about transitional objects like the lovey that your daughter had, right? Mm -hmm. That's a transitional object for nursing with Kendra, I guess, you know, if you want to get real specific. But yeah, it's a proxy of you. And, and it's, it's also, I mean, if you don't want to be so psychological about it, I mean, just common sense, it makes sense to, you're able to pick it up and look at it anytime, right? You don't need to pick up a device to look at it. It's just a thing that's there. Um, Also, it's meaningful because you know that someone put in time, especially if we're talking about a handwritten letter. But even word processing a letter and printing it out and putting it in an envelope, it still indicates, hey, I I took the effort to do this thing for you. And, And that's meaningful as well. 
Um, a certain kind of letter is called a gratitude letter. And now this might sound weird to you, Mark, but I want at least one of the letters that you write over the next couple of weeks to be a gratitude letter. Have you ever mm. heard of this before? Well, uh, no, I guess I haven't really heard of. Um, so let me just let me back you up a little bit. You okay. gave your context of letter writing. I yeah. was never a big letter writer. I've always just hated letter writing. Everything from thank you notes to just letters in general. Never never liked doing it, never thought I was good at it. It always, I'm left-handed, it always kind of hurt my hand to write letters, I don't know, just was a drag to do it. So well, you hate writing as is. Yeah, that's true. Wait, but what? <laughs> you hate, <laughs> I could say anything and you'll agree with that. I mean, in our last episode, you talked about how much you just hate to handwrite. Oh yeah, totally. Right. I just hate handwriting. Do you uh, remember writing all your bar mitzvah thank you cards? Yeah, it was grueling and awful. Terrible experience. Well, let me share this. Our mother is a genius, Dr. Nina Schechter. She came up with the best system, which I still enact here, of how to get us to write this thank you notes. Oh, what we is were that? only allowed to open a present or card after we had written a thank you note for the previous one. Oh, that's funny. And it's, so, sure. believe me, I got all my cards written without delay. And, really fast. Because you know, I wanted right. to, yeah, within like a, a week I was done. And I still do that with my kids. Oh, that's great. Anyway. Yeah, so I just want to put that context out there that I hate letter writing. I hate everything about it. Okay, well then it, your letters are going to be especially meaningful to the people who receive them. Because we it's shall a see. real labor. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so here's what a gratitude letter is. This is part of positive psychology. And I know that sounds like pop psychology, but it, it actually isn't. It's evidence-based. It's just a facet of psychology that focuses on asset building and strengths and mood elevation. So anyway, a really common thing in positive psychology is writing a gratitude letter. And this is very well evidenced. Again, basically, it's a letter that is thanking somebody in your life. Um, generally, it could be someone from your past thinking back, someone in your current life as well is fine. Thinking about someone who made a difference in your life, like a teacher, a mentor, is always someone that we especially try to write these letters to. And writing the letters elevates mood, gives better life satisfaction. But here's the kicker. You don't even have to send the letters. It's it's not what? even sending it. Yeah. Just, I mean, you can if you want, but just the act of writing the letter makes it causes these effects really? it's really powerful yeah That's so it's a very common thing it's really common in inpatient psychiatric facilities um, and programs like that i read a couple studies about caregivers there's a lot of emphasis on caregivers these days caregivers for individuals with serious physical illnesses or mental illness uh, like uh, alzheimer's caregivers you can imagine how grueling that is oh yeah so one of sure the, yeah, one of the articles I read was for those caregivers of individuals with Alzheimer's writing gratitude letters and how much that increased their uh, life happiness. I mean, obviously, it's not going to make them skipping down the road with joy, but right. if it's a little bit of life satisfaction and happiness, that's that's great. Because so it increases thing. satisfaction and happiness. Does it decrease stress? No. Nope. Oh, really? It's so not a cure-all. You're still going to be stressed out, but you know it does... It probably puts things in context a little bit, I guess. Interesting. But anyway, I want you to try to write at least one gratitude letter. Okay. You don't necessarily have to send that one. So it can be to someone, it could be to a teacher that like you don't even remember their name or anything, but you've got a good picture in your mind. Okay. So I've been reading a book by China Mieville called The Scar, where the main character is narrating the story um, using basically a letter. She does a bunch of activities during the day and every time she gets a break she sits down and adds a new section to this letter so it's a really big document by the okay. end of this book and she's unable to mail it which is kind of interesting also but yeah. that's the kind of thing that I wanted to write in addition to the gratitude letter that you suggested but um, writing something that just is I don't know like a journal or like a journal entry yeah it or sounds several like journaling. who would it be addressed to to your wife I guess yeah I'll, I'll make it to kindy Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Cause, yeah. All right. Yeah. No, that's that's interesting. Okay. So yeah, report back to. Are you going to handwrite it, or do you think you'll just type it? Oh no, I'm going to try. Ah, uh, now nah, I'm going to try to handwrite these things. I've wow. got some. Yeah, I've got some old stationery. I'll I'll blow the dust yeah. off of, and try that out, <laughs> and and see how it goes. And so you're going to write a bunch of gratitude letters? N not so much. I mean, I'll write at least one or two gratitude letters. Um, mostly, I mean. 
what what I find is when I'm writing letters, I end up turning them into that anyway, because sometimes you just run out of stuff to talk about, and it ends up being like, hey, I just want to thank you for X, Y, and Z, because it's Got an it. easy thing to write about. Um, okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is my area of research is everyone's most fun favorite party topic, suicide prevention. Yay. Okay. So there was this amazing researcher named Jerome Motto. He worked in San Francisco, and this is back in the 60s, or maybe 70s. I forget now. Long time ago. Um, Literature review available upon request. Anyway, he uh, was an inpatient psychiatrist treating people who uh, had had suicide attempts. So people who've attempted suicide in the past are more likely than others to try to attempt suicide again in the future, right? They're more at higher risk than just the general population. So they need specialized care. One of the things that he tried was he did a randomized control trial. Half of the patients after they left, he and his team for four years sent them letters, handwritten, caring letters about once a month, every other month, just saying, hey, we're thinking about you, just hoping you're doing well. Wow. Um, you know, and for these days, the idea of a treatment team taking out that much time from their schedule is really hard. It would be very difficult to do that because, you know, every minute is billable, basically. Um, all, anyway, what he found was that the patients who received the letters were less likely to die by suicide. Really? It's an incredible study. He um, and the effect was reached like after two years. After two years, the, the there wasn't really like a lot of additional benefit, but the individuals who received the letters had better outcomes. Um, That's it amazing, takes, and it's I, relatively simple. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's lots of potential reasons why all the things I mentioned before, it, no one really knows exactly why. So I was part of a randomized control trial. I was a researcher on this trial where we tried to replicate the caring letters, but we did it with email and also with snail mail. So we did a pilot where we evaluated, is there a difference between snail mail and email just to start out with? And then we did a larger randomized control trial in many different sites looking at just email. And that study is still going on. So I don't know the final results of it yet. But if you look me up, one of the research articles I published was part of that pilot. And we found that, I mean, it was an incredible study to be a part of. And I've got to tell you, I, I love being a researcher. And there's lots of studies that I've been a part of where I just get amazing interactions with people. But this this one was just incredible because sometimes we would get letters back and you, you can imagine how mm -hmm. heartfelt those are. I yeah. mean, I'm probably going to tear up now thinking about it. Oh. Some of those letters and some of the emails back, both the letters and the emails got a really good response. But obviously, I mean, people love getting letters. And in these days, it's especially rare. Yeah. So ever since that's, I mean, that's like the perfect study for me to be a part of because obviously I'm a letter writer anyway, but I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, it's a really incredible area. And I'm so glad that researchers are looking into it these days. There's another researcher in Seattle who's looking at carrying texts as a potential intervention. There, Hopefully we'll see a lot more literature about this. And especially, like you said, it's easy. I mean, it's easier than other things. And it's another kind of intervention in addition to medication. Medication is great. I'm a big believer in psychiatric meds, huge believer. But in addition, we need other types of care as well. Anyway, what we're going to do over the next two weeks is write letters. Yeah. I'm going to try to write a letter every day. And wow. if I don't get around to it every day, I'm going to at least average 14 letters over the next two weeks. So I might end up writing a whole bunch. That's on, great. I'm going to try to do that too. I'm going to try to shoot for the day, a letter a day thing also. Okay. Who are you going to write to? Or do you want to just come back and talk about that? Yeah, I'll just come back and talk about that. I'm, I don't really have it planned out yet. Okay. All right. Well, we had announced previously that if any of our listeners wrote us letters we would write back so when we come back in two weeks we'll report back on how many of you all sent us letters too hopefully there's a slew of letters waiting for us i hope so so i'll talk to you in a couple weeks yep stretch out your fingers I'm Christy Bingham, and you might have you may recognize me from my seven seconds of fame on season two of Lost. Yeah, I'm that, glad you were sitting down for that. Yeah, totally. Thank you for that. Um, we'll go and look that up. 
So you told me that you write letters. Why? One of the people I write letters to is my eight-year-old nephew in Spain, and we're pen pals. And so I love to give him something fun to look forward to in the mail. It encourages him to read, and then I love getting his letters back. And so just trying to foster, I guess, just the art of letter writing with my young nephew cool. to keep us connected. Do you write to anybody else? I have a lot of gratitude in my life, and I like to express it through letters and to let people know, as opposed to like just saying, hey, thanks for having me over for dinner. It's like, I'll write them a note to tell them how I appreciate them. Uh, my name's Sam Pretty. I don't have any seven seconds of fame. No. So you probably don't know me yet. No, not yet. Do you write letters? I do. To people, and why do you do it? Uh, mainly, it's my grandma, and it's just, a, you know, generationally, I just think it means something different to her than it means to other people that are... Probably my generation or, or younger, um, to her it's a little bit more what she would expect and it also shows that I'm spending time on her, so I think that matters. So are they letters to request like five dollars? <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Stephen Pappas. And I'm Julie Ken. And we are the host of the Meddling Kids podcast, a review of all things Scooby-Doo. We are going through every episode in the Scooby-Doo canon to explain all the questions you meddling kids have. Right, exactly. Like... Is Fred a serial killer? How old is Fred exactly? Why does Daphne have such bad posture? Where do these kids live? And is pot legal there? <laughs> Where is this place? I think it's Florida. Anyway, stick with us for the Meddling Kids Podcast, a groovy review of all things Scooby-Doo. Hi, Julie. Hey, Mark, before we get started, I want to give a little promo for the Washington Center for the Performing Arts here in Olympia because the amazing Brian Reed is coming and they still have tickets available at WashingtonCenter.org. Let me read a little bit of this copy because you've heard of Brian Reed, right? No, you know, I haven't. He, okay, he's the guy who made S-Town. Did you listen to that yet? No, I haven't. I need oh to get out gosh. more. You do. it. Well, you need to get in more because it's probably the most groundbreaking podcast that's ever existed. Oh, great. Um, okay. And he's also a producer on Serial and This American Life. And he's giving a, doing a show that's based on audio outtakes and all the reporting details that didn't get into the final cut. It's going to be incredible. It's on February 10th at 730 at our friends, the, the Washington Center for the Performing Arts. And you can get tickets at WashingtonCenter.org. Brian Reed. Awesome. Brian Reed, I'll go check out S-Town, too. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back, so, Julie. You, too, Mark. Thank so, you. how did it go? I hated this. Oh, it was Mark. awful. It's the worst thing ever. Uh, can I just give everyone a, a little glimpse behind the curtains here? So, uh, during the last two, well, we, we record more than two weeks apart, but during the part where we were supposed to be writing letters, Mark's like, I'm not going to do it. No, yeah, exactly. I I started to rebel. I got I got my flag out, started to rebel, wave my flag around, and um, Julie talked me off the ledge a little bit. Mark, it, it's not like I'm asking you to do something painful. It's not like well, I'm saying you know. But I also thought, like, what are we truly giving up? This isn't in the spirit of the podcast. Yes, it is. Our podcast isn't about just necessarily giving up stuff. It's about taking a closer look at the things we take for granted. And mm. you take for granted quick electronic communication. That's and, true. I anyway, do. Okay. Okay. So anyway, I was able to talk you back into it. Yes. So I so ended up writing it... three letters. <laughs> <laughs> okay what did you write all right so i i wrote one i wrote two one to each of my daughters to my Aww. nine-year-old and to my 13 year old and i wrote one longer one to kendra and the Aww. long yeah and so the the one to my nine-year-old and to my 13 year old i wrote them on different days so they received them on different days wrote them from seattle to snoqualmie and so it took five days for it to go from Seattle to Snoqualmie. What? Yeah, both letters, or actually all three letters, it took all three of them five days to get here. That's a lot. They should have gone with ponies. Uh, right? For $140, they could have gotten it here overnight. How did you decide who got the letter first? Did you just write to the kid you like more first? Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay, no. sorry, just kidding. Okay. No, you didn't. You wrote to that one second. Uh, right. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I I I wrote to um I wrote to my I'm nine year old first. Just happened to work out that way. Okay. Completely random. 
All randomly right. assigned. <laughs> and um, I wrote to her in a narrative format talking, and it was kind of a letter of gratitude like you were talking about. Nice. Talking about cool. how, you know, how much I love her and, and how great it is to be able to hang out with her and to have conversations with her and all these things. And then I wrote a letter to my 13-year-old really doing things that are very similar, except she's really into graphic novels. So I I cut down the amount of text and I drew little boxes. And you know how I draw those turtles? Oh, yeah. Um, I drew little turtles as the cartoon characters and they were saying things in the boxes like, I love you and I'm so proud of you and I'm glad you're doing X, Y, or Z and these things. So Julie, the recording that we're going to listen to is of our family dinner talking about these letters. Okay. Hi, 13-year-old. Hi. Hi, 9-year-old. Hi. Hi, 40-something-year-old. Thank you. 47-year-old. That's right. So, looks like you guys both got letters from me. What do you think? It's pointless. Pointless? Why? I see no point in what you wrote to me. What did I write to you? Um, basically, a plot line of what happened. And during what? Of what happened during a certain day. You just mentioned, like, oh, we should get our hair cut together. You just, like, listed a bunch of stuff that happened recently that you could easily just ask me in person. Uh-huh. But it should take a lot less time and effort. A lot less time and effort? Because you're dad. Because I'm your dad and I see you all the time? Yeah. Okay. Do you like how I, I mean, that, that letter right there, did you, did you show your nine-year-old sister? But it's a really good comic. I just don't think, yeah, the, so yeah. I think the content is pointless, but it's a, everything else is cool. Because I made it in the form of a graphic novel. It's a comic. A comic. Strip. It's comic strip. Really? I want to see. You made mine boring. <laughs> Can I see yours? I can't read it. It's about. Oh, you can't uh, read mine? No. You're a curly old person writing. <laughs> <laughs> it just has bad handwriting in general. So, so nine-year-old, could you can't read this letter at all? Well, yeah, it's a D. I can't read like. Do you want me to read it to you, or do you want Mama yeah, to read I'll it to you? Yeah, I want you to read it to me. Okay. It says. I am so glad you are my daughter. Congratulations on earning a big thumbs up from your teacher on your Peace Arch presentation and your math test. So proud of you. Oh, yeah. And your great scorecard from DMW. It's so cool to be with you as you do all these great things. I love you, Papa. So what do you think? Do you agree with your sister? It's still boring because you didn't put mine in comic form. How did you feel when you sat down at your table spot and saw that you had a letter? I felt actually really good. I felt it, I mean, it, it, I appreciate it. Physical things matter more than things up on the internet. <laughs> even though I thought, I mean, I must have spent like a half hour on each one of these letters. Wow. Even though I did that, my kids are little ingrateful bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're missing the whole point here. The whole so point that, is Aunt Julie forced me to do this stupid thing. Right, segment. exactly, right. And I did not throw you under the bus for that. Thank you. Sure. So the letter to Kendra, though, I wrote all about these things that were happening in my day. I just happened to have a really good day at work, and I decided to write it all up in a letter instead of talking to her about the good things that happened during the day the way I usually do after I get home or yeah. wherever I am or whatever. And so five days later, she opens it up and she's like, oh, this, this, and this. And I'm like, um, can you remind me what I told you? <laughs> <laughs> it was five days ago. What was so great about that day? What were some of the things? <laughs> um, and, you know, she never actually said anything like, wow, this was amazing to get this letter. It was so nice and heartwarming and blah, blah, blah. It really, we didn't really seem to be too earth shaking for her. So, <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> I, as far as my oh, effort man. goes and, um, you know, the general impact, I'd rate it as very, very low and I would not recommend this to a friend. But, okay. So what about, <laughs> okay. So it sounds like you didn't get any of like the external validation that I was hoping you would get. Zero. Less than zero. In your life. I had okay. to sit there apologizing for <laughs> the style that I was writing it. And my okay. hand also hurt during this letter writing stuff, just like it used to. It's so bogus. Okay, but what about your mood elevation? Did you? No, mind? no. <laughs> Not even after no. writing your gratitude letter, you weren't like, "Wow, my life is great." Well, okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, after I wrote those letters, and after I wrote the long one to Kendra, I was like, "Yeah, you know, this is really cool to kind of sum it up like this, and to be able to share it with her in this way." But now, after seeing that the results were basically negative, 
Um, <laughs> it undid all it of that. It undid all of that. <laughs> Just like, why? Why did I spend the time on it? Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, for me, I, I wrote like a gazillion letters. And did you write? Did you do your 14 like you wanted to? Yeah, yeah, I did at least 14. Oh, at least, I wrote okay. to like my rabbi. I wrote to, um, oh, yeah, for the gratitude letter, I wrote to the, my rabbi and to the director of education for Sunday school because she's wow. incredible and someone who never probably gets the thanks that she deserves but is just an incredible incredible woman um and human being she's the kind of person who i definitely want to be more like her so anyway i i wrote them a nice letter or i wrote them a letter i shouldn't call my own letter nice um i wrote to a bunch of people who um just i haven't written to in a while who i had their addresses i wrote to mom and dad um and that one i did get a very nice email back from mom which i forwarded to you to say see it was it was (laughs) it was really nice but truly mom will like anything mom loves me best wait what well, mom will love anything you send her way. That's not but, true. Right, mom? Because she's a mom. Awesome. That's what yeah. moms do. <laughs> That's how they roll. Come on, Julie. You know that. Okay, this is true. Um, no, the reason I love all my children's artwork is because it is exceptional. Right. Not just because I'm biologically geared to love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I and uh, you know, I uh, was doing a craft exchange with some people for another for the Is This Adulting podcast. So I wrote letters to those people as part of that and timed it accordingly. Um, so that all worked out really nice. And the fun thing was on one of the days that I was getting all my stationery out, my daughter got really into it. I sent you a bunch of pictures of her writing Yeah, letters. and I actually received one of her letters. Yeah, tell us about it, that. Was that fun? Oh, uh, it was super nice to open up and, and to get that. Yes, it was. Great. I don't remember what she wrote to you. But I remember she drew you a picture, right? And then you know what? Something. I honestly don't remember either. Okay, well, it was awesome. Now, when and cute when you read her. letters, you're supposed to remember the contents of them seven days later. <laughs> I don't think it. Ma- I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Not what's the etiquette in letter writing. At, I don't know at our advanced ages. Well, that's why you save the letters forever. I mean, that's the other thing is like looking back in history, no one would ever consider like recycling or throwing out a letter, right? Like people uh, save these for entire lives. True. Long time ago. Yep. Yeah. Long time ago. Long anyway. Time ago. Yep. But you remember the how we asked our listeners to send us mail and we'd write them back do you want to take a guess of how many letters we got from our fantastic listeners zero no we got one and <laughs> <laughs> it's okay I, I don't hold this against our listeners they're all really busy people but mm-hmm. our favorite listener wrote us oh yeah do you want it yeah one Ms. Leora Rapkin. Woo! Hi, Leora. Also known, hi, Leora, also known as our cousin, who we That's already right. loved <laughs> and was already our favorite listener, but now she's extra, extra, extra our favorite listener. Right. So, what Julie, I haven't just, opened- just to be clear, it's not a contest among our listeners. It, it is. But it really though. is. It really it, is. But it kind of yeah. is, yeah. It, okay. And we'll still write back to anyone who writes us, by the way, because I still am always looking for and an excuse to write By letters. we, you mean you. Exactly. Perfect. Because they don't Um, (laughs) want probably a letter from me anyway, because they're just big downers, I think. (laughs) Apparently, no. (laughs) Yeah, and you can't handle all the complaints. No. no. (laughs) Anyway, so let me describe this letter, because I I was saving it to open while we were recording. And so I haven't actually written her back yet. What was that noise? (laughs) That was Pebbles. Pebbles, (laughs) if you do that again, you're going out of here. (laughs) My dog is in here. She has 4,600 followers. Oh my gosh, Pebbles. Are you paying for those followers on I Fiverr? am not paying for them. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's so let me tell you about this letter from Leora. It is gorgeous stationery and she used a wax seal. What? On the back. I I've never opened a letter with a wax seal before. Does do I you hope- have to pay more than a first class stamp if you include a wax seal? Uh nope. She used a Wonder Woman forever stamp. Nice wow. choice, Lee. Nice choice, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm opening this up. This is so fancy. I feel bad even opening it. Ooh, Mark, inside is a card, and it matches the envelope. Wow. Uh, classy. And it, there's classy. gold, shiny <laughs> stuff. Yeah, okay. I, I hope there's no curse words in this, because I was planning on reading it on the air. Do you oh, wait, you haven't read this yet? No, I was saving it. Oh, See, so awesome. you could it because I wasn't sure if you would get any mail except for what my daughter and I sent you, and I wanted you to experience the yeah, joy of getting mail. Yeah, I didn't mail. get any. Sorry. Okay. Dear Julie and Mark, notice my name is first. Yeah, it's yeah. it's alphabetic. You're right, it is. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, I can read this all. Okay. I love your podcast so much that I got out my good stationery to write. She sure did. <laughs> the station wagon deserves better than leftover notebook paper, Lee. 
I love it. She's so great. Thank you, Lee. You're the best. So we will definitely write back to Lee and anyone else who's That's awesome. male. Okay, so I would definitely recommend this. I recommend writing letters to people. I think it elevates mood and helps give something to others. It's a really nice, generous thing to do with your time, especially these days when people are so busy. It's like making a gift. Making a what? Gift. Gift. Like crafting some. If you Got don't know it. how to knit or crochet, write a letter or do oh, both. That's, that's actually really interesting. Yeah. Bake instead of baking cookies, write a letter. Or both. Or both, right. Because I think I would actually like to get cookies more than a letter. <laughs> Maybe that's part of it is that you don't like getting mail as much as I do. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not so into it. Because then what do you do with it? Where do I put it when I'm done? <laughs> yeah. Who are you, Seinfeld? My so- my place is already like my sections of the house where I get to put a few of my belongings. <laughs> is you know how my house is laid out? It's already I do. So There's- messy and gross. Where would what, I put your some house? Nice is lit- messy and gross. No, the, the sections, sections, the mark okay. sections. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify yeah, that. Yeah, no, to be you... totally tra- clear about that one. Oh my gosh! Well, that goes to our next episode topic, right? What was it? Our next episode. Oh my gosh! So our next episode, Julie. This is one's going to be not the first... my idea. Okay, this is actually my idea. Thank yeah. you for letting me have my way once. Appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be the first in a series of episodes. Um, (laughs) where not necessarily linear, but uh, first in a series of episodes where we give up things that we take for granted in relation to our spouses. So this first one is going to be, I know it sounds weird, but the first one is going to be, uh, putting away kitchen utensils where they belong. So we're giving up putting things away. No, we're giving up putting things away where they don't belong. (laughs) Can we just like not call it? giving up don't <laughs> blah 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 and just like talk about it as like we're gonna focus on putting things away yes in the kitchen okay just the kitchen yeah just the kitchen well i don't know about your kitchen but our kitchen is always a source of friction okay maybe we should ask olaf i i'm talking about jason he doesn't like me to say his name yeah. um to, well, I'm where glad no one his, listens to this anyway, so that's good. Right, so what his area of friction is, it might be the garage, because that's the area that he likes to keep nice and neat, and I just think of as a black hole where I can put things and they go away. That's super interesting. I didn't know that you guys had that kind of discussion happening. I just kind of thought that you both treated it like a rat trap. <laughs> Those rats are happy. They are not they trapped are in there. Got- <laughs> <laughs> I would like to trap them. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not how things go. Okay, so we'll I'll, I'll interview my beloved husband on tape and ask him what he would like me to do. That sounds great. And, and then we maybe that'll be a, some... one of the other episodes in this little mini series. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, we should interview them just in general to find out. Hey, what's what would improve your marriage quality? <laughs> oh, <laughs> brother, do you really want to go there? I don't know. I don't. Well, are we just going to decide what we need to do to improve things? Yeah, I think it should be like that. You know, like when okay. you get gather requirements, <laughs> but it's only those requirements that you think customers need, instead yeah, of actually you- <laughs> talking to the customers. <laughs> You've been there. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, because when you start talking to customers, you know what you get? Scope creep. Ah, oh, totally. They don't I have don't any be... idea about scope. Absolutely <laughs> right. Exactly. I don't want to become a perfect spouse. I want to no. be like 80% good enough. rule. 80% rule. Exactly. Minimum viable product is what oh I'm my going God, for here. That's <laughs> awesome. That is so great. Okay. Anything All right. else you wanted to talk about? Well, yeah, I just wanted to be gratitudeful <laughs> yeah good one yeah that was a word yeah. okay so um thanks so much to people who've given us itunes reviews before um if the rest of y'all could go to itunes if you have it and subscribe and rate us there or wherever you get your podcast that would be super helpful also when people share our posts on social media that is amazing thank you you can email us your suggestions for future podcasts at episodes and topics and things we could do for our spouses at wagon <laughs> Podcast. Or anything. Or anything. Send us uh, all your ideas. All the ideas. Please. Wagonpodcast at gmail.com. But you do need to state them as user stories. Oh, right. So like um <laughs> as as a as a dorky podcaster, uh-huh. I want to be able to uh not wear pants so Ugh. that I can show off my legs. 
Perfect. Excellent. Very good. Really stupid and excellent. Okay. Um, you can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter at okay. Wagon Pod. And um, mm-hmm. thank you so much to the Pleasure Kills for the use of the song Modern Problems. And um, thanks to Leora Rapkin for our excellent mail. I don't suck. Thank I, you, I, I Google stuttered Docs. there. Uh, I, Mark and I are doing a Google Doc at the same time, and he's being very mean to me. And I stuttered because I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying the word suck. Really? Yeah. It's That's... not like a really bad word, but it's bad enough. And I say it too much, and my kids have started saying well, it. Well, I think I hear another episode. Giving Well, well that was episode two. Number well, two I know, but giving up focusing swearing. on that one word, because I say it giving all the time. Up sucking. <laughs> giving up <laughs> sucking. Giving up the word suck. Uh, maybe. maybe. Maybe we could do that. Yeah. Giving up being a bad parent. How about that? That's, no, that's <laughs> never going to happen. Okay. Well, thanks to the to Pleasure you. Kills for the song Modern Problems. Oh, what a unique and amazing thing you just said that I did not just say 45 seconds ago. Before, I know. While did you were you busy it? writing, you suck in the Google Docs. That's what You know, what I I, maybe that's about. why I didn't hear you say it. I'm sorry. Maybe? Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, that could be. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess. Um, I'll thanks to our spouses and our friends. For putting I, up I, with us? Oh, yeah. Did you already Thank say you. that one? No, I didn't. Oh, and hey, Thanksgiving's coming up. What oh, yeah. a perfect time for a gratitude letter. Ah. Ah, good one. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye, Marky. Bye, Julie. Opening up the agenda. All righty. I am excited. Oh, are you going to do this whole episode with an English accent? That's just how I talk. Oh, nice. It's very fancy. I just fancy. Awesome like that.